So I thought I'd do a wee kind of introduction slash first look at my new Sonder Dial cross country mountain bike. Um, I only got this last night, so I thought I would just do a little kind of look to show you exactly what it's like straight out of the box. Because I am planning to make quite a few changes, upgrade, alter a few components. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just go around all the parts on the bike and just give you a little kind of walkthrough of what's what. Um, I've not had much time to ride it, um, so it's not really a full on review, but just a little kind of look at the spec of the bike, because there are some quite interesting choices in there. Um, it is worth noting that Sonder were pretty honest on their website. They said that, you know, the sort of um, specifications are subject to change with, you know, component shortages and things like that. That's totally fair. It's pretty kind of standard. So, um, yeah, it's all pretty good. Nothing was a downgrade. There are quite a few changes. Got quite a few nice kind of upgrade parts. So that's pretty good. Saves me having to go out and buy them. Um, but there's a few things I'm going to change anyway. So um, let's go and have a little look around. So there's no better place to start than right here at the front of the bike with the fork. I've got a RockShox Reba RL. Um, it's a 100mm fork, air sprung with a motion control damper. Um, as standard, the bike came stocked with a recon, but there was the option to upgrade for a pretty small fee um, to the Reba, which um, I went for mostly on the grounds of weight. Um, the Reba, according to RockShox, weighs in at 1600 grams, which it's not super light, it's not challenging the sled or anything like that, but you know, it's a fairly respectable weight for basically how little I paid for it, so I'm pretty happy with that. And on top of the fork, we've obviously got the controls here. And we've got a Sonder Pisky 55mm stem. This was one of the things I was a wee bit kind of less sure about. Um, I reckon 55mm is probably just a wee bit short. Um, I never thought I'd be the kind of guy to say that um, Getting a stem on a cross country bike would be too short. Um, usually you'd expect them big like 110mm bad boys, especially on extra large frames. But um, yeah, I think the 55mm here is a wee bit short. So um, I've just ordered a 70mm stem, that'll maybe make it a wee bit longer. Uh, maybe try an 80 as well. I've got an 80 on my gravel bike, so I might try borrowing that. Um, again, it looks kind of alright. It's a fairly kind of basic um, generic Chinese stem. So. That would usually be a, a pretty good target for an upgrade pretty soon anyway, so no big deal there. And we've got about 35mm worth of spacers there, so 30mm underneath the stem and 5mm on top. The handlebar here is another thing that wasn't on the spec. This is a Sonder Horizon bar. Um, I couldn't find anything about this on the internet at the time of looking um, when I recorded this video. It's a 750mm bar. Um, it was advertised to come with a 720mm straight bar, which um, which was fine. Um, 750 is a wee bit nicer, it just gives you a wee bit of room, especially again being an extra large frame, being a bigger rider, and I'm mean, 6 foot 3, so having a slightly wider bar isn't really a bad thing there. Um, the back sweep is pretty pretty severe, so again that kind of um, that contributes quite a bit to, to making the reach quite short. Um, Bringing, bringing the grips back quite far. So again, combine that with the, um, the shorter stem, it's just not quite where I'd want it to be. So um, yeah, that's that's one of the reasons for getting a longer stem, just to move the, move the grips forward in a slightly more comfortable position for me. On the ends of the handlebars here, we've got these Love Mud clutch grips. Uh, Love Mud is the old name for Saunders' kind of own brand components. Um, they seem all right. They're maybe a little bit thin. Um, Again, this is one of these kind of components that I was going to automatically upgrade anyway. I've already bought a pair of Ergon GA3 grips. Um, so yeah, they're not the best grips, not the worst, but I'm replacing them anyway, so it's not the end of the world. Um, you can see on there I've got the Dior brake cleavers and the Dior 12-speed shifters. That's all the M6100 stuff, 12-speed. Um, really, really nice. Um, really, really good that they come already set up with the iSpec EV clamp on them. I wasn't sure if that was going to come um, like that straight out of the box. So really, really happy that's the way it is. Um, just makes it really nice and tidy on the bars. Um, no faff. I did have to um, adjust the, the reach on the levers. Um, again, I've got pretty big hands, so I just have to adjust the levers all the way out. Um, you do have to use an Allen key for that with the Dior levers 
Whereas with some of the fancier, you know, SLX, XT, XTR, um, there's a little kind of dial to adjust that. But that was pretty quick. I mean, for me, it was literally just grab a three mil Allen key. But was it a three mil? Was it two and a half? I can't remember. I think it was a two and a half. But yeah, basically just wind it all the way out to get the maximum reach. Um, I've not done a full kind of fine adjustment on these, but um, once I get the new grips on, I'll, um, I'll start playing around with the positions and making sure that everything's just exactly the way I want it. Down at the other end of those brake hoses, um, we've got these Shimano Dior M6124 pot brakes, which were again a wee bit of a surprise, a wee bit of a break from the spec. Um, I had thought it was just going to be the normal two pot brakes, and actually on some of the more recent builds that they're advertising on the website at the moment, they were saying they were just going to come with SRAM brakes, which is quite a kind of surprise given it's a Dior spec build. Um, but yeah, to get these four pots is brilliant. Um, again, I'm a bigger guy, slightly heavier rider, so having these big um, big four pot brakes is, is really nice. I mean, sure, they, they weigh a little bit more, but um, having that extra power on hand definitely doesn't seem like a bad thing to me. So yeah, I'll be quite happy to um, happy to give those a go. Um, the rotors are a little bit different as well. Um, again, the specs were saying that these were going to be Tektro rotors. You know, I'm sure they're not bad, but um, again, I kind of thought, well, I'll, I'll buy some upgrade rotors. Um, but actually, they came with these RT66s, which again are, are pretty decent rotors, a little bit better than what I was expecting. Um, I've already bought some RT86 rotors. Um, so that's uh, 180 at the front and 160 at the rear. Um, there's no real weight difference, but obviously the um, the aluminium ice tech um, rotors in the RT86 will hopefully help with um, with cooling off on any of those kind of big big descents or anything like that. So as I said, um, this is the Dior build spec model. Um, so you could choose quite a few different options based on the, the dial frame. You could either have it in Dior, SLX or XT. And I had SRAM, SRAM options for SX, NX and GX Eagle. Um, I went for Dior. Um, I'd actually really want to go for SLX originally. Um, that would be kind of step up. But um, unfortunately at the time I ordered the SLX builds weren't available or they were they were shown as you were going to have to wait till February or something like that, and it's September just now. So, um, yeah, I decided to go for Dior because that was really um, that was really all that was available in a hurry at the time. And it's it's great. It's not bad at all. Um, it all seems pretty rock solid. I mean, I've only only been out for a brief ride on it so far, but it's all running really smoothly and really happily. Again, got a week and a lucky spec upgrade there as well. You can see this is actually the um, 8100 um, 10-51 XT cassette. Um, you can tell that, I um, might not be able to tell this shot, it's a pretty bad shot actually, but the two um, the two bigger um, cogs on the cassette there are made of aluminium rather than steel, which saves quite a bit of weight. Um, that's pretty nice. And then up front we've got the, um, the M6100 chain set um, with a single 32 tooth chain ring on it. Looking a little bit more closely at this chain set, um, there's one of the features of the frame that I'm not super enthusiastic about. Um, and it's this little kind of chain stay bridge here. Um, you can see that the chain ring gets really slightly kind of worryingly close to it there. Um, going by the shape of it, it looks like it was kind of designed for a for a two by drive train with a smaller, smaller inner ring and a bigger outer ring, hence the reason it's got that kind of stepping on it. Um, so yeah, I'm a wee bit worried, you know, if I was to, for example, want to, um, want to upgrade to something like a 34 tooth chain ring, um, whether that would maybe get a little bit close, because yeah, I'm a wee bit, wee bit not super keen about how, um, how close in that gets there. It's worth noting that none of the builds as standard come with pedals. Um, this is something I really like, and this is something I'm all for. Um, because usually they come with cheap plastic pedals that get thrown in the bin right away. So I'm glad they didn't do that. Um, in this case here, I've stuck a pair of Shimano XT T8000 pedals. These are the, um, the SPD Turin or XT Turin pedals, which you can see are SPD on one side um, and a reasonably nice flat pedal on the other. You can see they're still nice and uh, freshly full of grease going by how they're not moving. Um, but these are great pedals. I've had these on my gravel bike for the last couple of years. 
Um, really like them, so I just went straight out and bought another pair to put on here. As you can see on the top tube here, I've gone for an extra large frame. Um, I'm six foot three, and that's kind of what the what the sizing guide recommended. Seems pretty spot on so far. I'm quite happy with this. Again, one slightly um, idiosyncratic choice is the um, the decision to stick the frame size sticker on the top tube there. Normally, you'd see that kind of hidden away in the um, on the seat tube, but again, I'll probably be peeling that off pretty soon anyway. Um, I'll likely be sticking some protective heli tape along the um, along the top tube for using the bike packing bags and stuff like that. So yeah, that'll be cool. Another thing I've got to admit I'm not super keen on is this Union Jack on the back of the seat tube. Uh, not gonna lie, that's probably gonna get covered up by some kind of sticker, uh, by black tape, maybe. I don't know, I've got a thousand and one van stickers or whatever sitting in a little box, so I might stick one of those over it, because well, let's be honest, it's pretty naff, nobody wants that on their bike. Climbing up the seat tube, um, we've got this nice little compact M part um, seat tube, seat post clamp here. Um, again, interesting that it's an M part one rather than a, rather than a Sonder branded thing, um, but it's great. I think it was originally spec with a quick release um, seat clamp. And the fact that it's got a bolted on one is actually a major bonus because that's something I would have changed out anyway. Um, I'm not a huge fan of quick release um, seat posts, so um, I'm glad they put this on. That's probably saved me spending uh, spending 20, 30 quid on a pointlessly blingy one from Hope or somebody like that. The seat tube itself is a 31.6mm post. Um, again, just a fairly generic Chinese thing. Um, it's fine, it works. I'm probably going to change that for a dropper, but um, not this month. I'm going to, <laughs> going to have to wait. I've uh, spent too much already on upgrades, so um, yeah, I think I'll, I'll wait till I've got a wee bit more money again before I splash it on a dropper. And so again, if we come right to the top of the seat tube here, on top of the seat post, we've got this Sonder Abode saddle. Um, it's not necessarily a bad saddle as such, but um, it's very, very narrow. Um, it's a 138mm, which is just, I mean, it's far too narrow for me or most human beings that I know. Again, it's an extra large frame. It's probably going to be ridden by pretty big people. Um, I know being tall doesn't necessarily mean wider sit bones or anything like that, but um, yeah, no, this is, this, is, this is going to have to go straight away. So again, I've already ordered, I usually ride a 155mm saddle, um, so going from a 155 to a 138 is just a little bit too much of a shock. Um, the saddle itself is basically, it's more or less the same shape as the, the classic charge spin saddle. I've got a couple of them kicking about um, that I've used before. Um, it's just narrower, that's the big problem. So for, for me, that was the, um, the instant factor ruling it out, I'm afraid. So um, yeah, that'll be, that'll be getting replaced with a specialised fin on pretty soon, um, as soon as that arrives in the post. So after having a wee bit of a moan about things I didn't really like, um, one of the things I really do like about this frame is the clearance. Um, it's got these um, big massive 29 by 2.4 um, WTB Ranger tyres. And as you can see, particularly around the seat stays here, there's millions of room for mud. And that's really, really good. I'm really, really happy about that. Um, again, I'm a wee bit old school. I haven't had a cross country bike for, or a mountain bike in general for years and years. Um, so, you know, if you, if you were thinking what I'd have put on, I'd been thinking like, oh, maybe like a, a 29 by 2.1 or 2.2 for cross country riding. But actually, yeah, these 2.4s are, they're magic. They've got loads of room. Um, so yeah, I think these are, these are the way forward. Um, the WTB Rangers, um, I'm probably going to try and keep the back tyre, but I'm going to change the front tyre over right away. Again, I've ridden them around a little bit. They seem fairly fast rolling. The um, the big kind of issue I see with them is they don't look like they'd be much good in a Scottish winter. Um, they've got very kind of low, pile, low profile tread knobs. Um, you know, probably fine for the summer riding on kind of hard pack trails, but... Um, I've already um, I've already bought a Maxxis Forecaster for putting on the front, um, so I'm just going to keep one of these on the back where it's not quite so crucial. So yeah, I'll see how that goes. Um, it doesn't say whether these are tubeless compatible, um, but I will need to. Um, I'll pop them off and have a look. They've got tubes in them at the moment. Um, I'll be changing over the front one anyway, and I'll maybe um, 
maybe see whether the back one can go tubeless or not. Another kind of positive thing, after um, reading a few reviews, I mean, actually there aren't really many reviews of this bike around, which is why I'm kind of making this video in the first place. Um, they picked up on the fact that it didn't have two sets of bottle cages. It only had one set on the down tube, but um, it seems like some of the more recent models also have a second set on the seat tube. So um, I've got that as well there. So um, yeah, I'm gonna stick some bottle cages on it. Um, I've bought some bottle cage movers from a company called 76 Projects. They do some really nice um, 3D printed stuff. So that lets you move the bottle mints down a little bit lower. Um, I did that on my gravel bike again, and it's really, really lovely. So um, as soon as I got this ordered, I um, got a set of those bottle cage movers as well. So hopefully that'll let me move the, move the bottles down as low in the frame as I possibly can, and then have a wee bit of room in the top for some kind of bike pack and frame bag. Another kind of interesting spec point I forgot to mention are these um, Alpha 29 um, wheels that came with the bike as well. Now again, as standard, the bike comes stock with the Sonder Nova wheels, which are a pretty kind of basic entry level wheel set. But I noticed when um, I was going through the ordering page on this, the Alpkit website, there was an option for a free upgrade to the Alpha XC wheel set, which is a bit more of a kind of like I guess it's their more kind of like mid-range offering. Um, so that's what I did. I ordered the Alpha XCs, but when I got the bike, it came with these Alpha 29s. Now, as far as I can tell, the hubs are the same on both builds. The big differences are actually just the rims. Um, the Alpha XCs come with a much narrower rim. It's a 23mm internal, whereas these Alpha 29s are a bit more of a kind of trail-focused trail rim. Um, and they come with 30mm internal rims, which makes them uh, makes them nice and wide, but most importantly gives a really good platform for those uh, 2.4 tyres, gives them a really good shape. Um, means that I guess it's a bit more of a kind of um, robust friendly decision. So um, combined with the, uh, the four pot brakes, um, these nice big tyres, nice big wheels, um, that's kind of reassuring when you're, again, when you're riding a bigger frame um, on an extra large bike, you're... Uh, you're feeling a bit more confident that the, uh, the components are going to stand up to the, uh, the battering that you're going to give them. So that's, uh, that's quite reassuring. The weight on these is not great, but it's not too bad either. Um, it's not something I'm going to upgrade right away. Um, the weight on these is 2.1 kilos, which, yeah, it's not especially light. Um, but, you know, it's a nice easy one if I do want to save a bit of weight later. Um, that's something I can upgrade um, quite easily to save save a few grams off. Interestingly, the Alpha 29s with these wider rims are actually only about 100 grams heavier than the Alpha XC rims, um, which, yeah, I suppose is a bit of a trade-off for the um, for the extra the extra durability you get and the extra tyre shape you get from having the wider rims. So that's, um, yeah, that's fair enough. I'm quite happy I can live with that. All right, so that's kind of everything I was kind of hoping to cover. Um, pretty impressed with it so far. Um, other thing I forgot to mention as well, talking about the overall bike, is the weight of it. Um, the weight spec on the website are a wee bit kind of funny. They're a wee bit sort of like all over the place. Um, this bike here has an extra large frame with pedals on it, um, using my um, highly accurate luggage scale, one of those like crap little spring balance ones came out showing that it was somewhere between about 11.5 and 12k, which seems pretty reasonable, I'd think. Um, that is with the Rebar as well, which is a little bit lighter than the, the Recon, which is specified as stock. That just about tallies up with them. Um, I made a little saddle spreadsheet as well with all the weights of all the components and added it up. And that came out about 11.6, 11.7 or something as well. So that all seems to kind of tally up. It's a reasonable weight. Not too heavy, but not super light either. Um, there's definitely room for a few savings. Um, definitely things like, you know, tires, wheels, um, controls, things like that. So, um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to um, getting a few changes made, getting it all kind of specced up to the way I like it. Um, and most importantly, getting out and giving it a good ride and getting a bit, bit of a thrash on the trails with it. So, yeah, happy days.